If you wake up in the morning and you check your phone before you say good morning to the person sitting next to you, you probably have a problem. If you have to take your phone from room to room, no matter where you go, you probably have a problem. And just you already know what it is. It's your boy Lay back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bet? Bah. It's your boy Lay back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction, man. Hey, so with my TikTok people, man. Look, we back. We got some space stuff going on, with some social media stuff going. It's a lot of stuff in this one. It's a lot of stuff in this one. So just prepare yourself. You make it to the end of this one. You a real one for real. I'm just saying that because this is one of them ones. But hey, I got a TikTok playlist. If you went to this stuff, you can go check it out, man. Also, I appreciate you, man. How many times have you ever had a creator say, I appreciate you? I appreciate you. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad was popping. Let's get it. There is a terrifying theory about our universe that the human mind can't comprehend. It's called the Eternal Universe Theory. Okay. Many astrophysicists wonder if the Big Bang was merely an event, and not when the universe actually formed. But instead, the theory suggests that the universe has always existed. In this view, the universe is seen as an unchanging and in- Do your own research. I gotta say that. Do your own research research thank you infinite entity where matter and energy are continually being created to maintain a constant average density as the universe expands unlike the widely accepted big bang theory which proposes that the universe originated from a singular point in an event known as the big bang the eternal universe theory suggests that the universe has always existed and will continue to exist indefinitely mm. This idea challenges the conventional understanding of the cosmos and raises profound questions about the nature of time, space, and the ultimate fate of the universe. Supporters of the eternal universe theory argue that it provides a more elegant explanation for the universe's existence. By eliminating the need for a cosmic beginning, the theory avoids the conundrum of what preceded the Big Bang or what caused it to occur. It also negates the requirement for a hypothetical singularity which is a point of infinite density, a concept that currently lies beyond the reach of our scientific understanding. Moreover, an eternal universe implies that the conservation of energy and matter holds true throughout time, reinforcing one of the fundamental principles of physics. There can be no time travel because so far, no one from the future has ever shown up and said hi. What that requires is that there's no time travel to the past because the future person would then be coming to the past. We can travel into the future, however. Our understanding of that has been around since 1905. It's Einstein's special theory of relativity. If I send you on a spaceship at speeds nearing the speed of light and we watch you, we will see that your clock ticks more slowly than our own. And then you come back, right. it's the famous twin sure, study. Sure. You send out your twin, they can come back, you age 20 years, your twin would have aged only 10, depending on the exact speed. And so in that way, what? your twin went into the future. Now, you write about the past. We don't know yet how to go into the past. There's some peculiar solutions of Einstein's equations that allow past travel, but then you can interact with your life, you're in sort of another place. Because imagine if you could interact with your own life, prevent your parents That'd from meeting. Crazy. Then you were never conceived. Then you could have never been sent back in time to prevent your parents from meeting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in that time travel stuff, man. Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. On June 12th, 2022, astronomers detected a mysterious radio signal that was pulsing rhythmically like a heartbeat. The signal named FRB 20191221A is an intensely strong flash of radio waves coming from an unknown point of origin. Most FRBs last only a few milliseconds at most, but this new signal lasted about three seconds, making this FRB with the clearest periodic pattern ever detected. This mm. means that the signal was not natural, but almost a form of communication. Now here's where things really take a turn. After studying this signal, scientists found that it originated from a habitable exoplanet Kepler. 
Y'all let me know. Do y'all think aliens exist? I mean, shoot. They done said it. The government has said it. But anyway, let's go. 186F. However, before the scientists could confirm this hypothesis, the signal stopped suddenly after months of pulsating like a heartbeat. It could be possible that the signal was interrupted or deliberately switched off. We may never know about this signal ever again, and can only wonder if we are truly alone in this universe. If you find this video interesting, comment down your thoughts and follow for more. Man, we not alone in the universe. Ain't no way everyone here is a real person. Life is a simulation and a legitimate professor has proved it. James Gates, a theoretical physicist at MIT with two bachelor degrees and a PhD, found literal computer code embedded in the most fundamental building blocks of reality called strings. Now, string theory is a tough one, but I'm gonna break it down for you in a way that an 11 year old would understand. So if you don't get this, hey, go back to grade five, bro. All right, so we got my boy Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is basically just a theory of everything big planets, gravity, the universe, all the way back to the Big Bang. Then we got the new kid in town, quantum physics. This is the theory of everything small, like particles, atoms, and molecules, where the general laws of physics, like gravity, don't apply anymore. The same is true the other way around. Quantum laws don't apply to regular-sized physics. So we got general relativity, everything big, and quantum physics, everything small. Like, yo, dig. But both of these realms have the same parent, the Big Bang, at which point everything that is now big used to be small. If the small can become big, then quantum and general relativity need some sort of theory that can unify them. That is string theory. What happens to the big when it's small? What happens when you zoom into an atom? You see protons and neutrons in the center with electrons all around it. Now, what about inside a neutron? Even smaller particles called quarks. So how deep does the scale go? Conventional science will tell you there's nothing inside these quarks. But string theory suggests there's a tiny filament or a string of pure energy that exists inside of them. And just like the string of a guitar vibrates and creates different sound based on its shape and tension, the strings in string theory vibrate. But instead of sound, they produce matter in the form form of particles. This completely changes the way you look at the world. Every particle in the universe is just a string vibrating at a different frequency. And wow. every vibrational pattern has its own associated particle. So if you break anything down far enough, we're all just energy vibrating at differing wavelengths to form matter. Although yeah. it's still just a theory, this would link general relativity to the quantum realm and form what is known as the theory of everything. Okay, yeah, cool. Now where is this computer code found? When Dr. James Gates took a look at a set of equations derived from string theory, he found binary code error correcting code used for compressing data on a computer. A sequence of ones and zeros, the same code that is used by popular search engines, which according to what? him, who has a PhD in theoretical physics from MIT, doesn't just resemble computer code, it literally is computer code. Meaning, what? if we break matter and energy down far enough, we eventually find compressing computer code etched into the very fabric of reality. So wow. who wrote this code? Are we living in, wow. dare I say, a simulation? Wow. Wow. Do you see this galaxy right here? Well, I got some bad news for you. Even if we left Earth today, traveling at the speed of light, we would never be able to reach it. The same goes for this galaxy right here, and this one too, and 94% of all of the galaxies in our universe. They are forever out of our reach and moving away from us faster than the speed of light due wow. to the expansion of space. In 100 billion years from now, every galaxy in our universe will be too far away to ever reach them, and in 2 trillion years from now, the universe will have expanded so much that galaxies won't even be able to see each other. That means in the far distant future, even if more technologically advanced civilizations evolve, they will never know that other galaxies exist. And what? their universe will be a lot smaller than the one we live in today. That is crazy stuff right here. You can never see anything enter a black hole. Imagine you trap your nemesis in a rocket ship and blast him off towards a black hole. He looks back at you, shaking his fist at a constant rate. As he zooms in, gravity gets stronger, so you'd expect him to speed up. But that is not what you see. Instead, the rocket ship appears to be slowing down. Not only that, he also appears to be shaking his fist slower and slower. That's because from your perspective, his time is slowing down. At the very instant when he should cross the event horizon, the point beyond which not even light can escape, he and his rocket ship do not disappear. Instead, they seem to stop, frozen in time. What? The light from the spaceship gets dimmer and redder until it completely fades from view. This is how any object would look crossing the event horizon. Light is still coming from the point where he crossed, it's just too red shifted to see. 
But if you could see that light, then in theory you would see everything that has ever fallen into the black hole frozen on its horizon, wow. including the star that formed it. But in practice, photons are emitted at discrete intervals, so there will be a last photon emitted outside the horizon, and therefore these images will fade after some time. This is just one of the strange results that comes out of the general theory of relativity, our current best theory of gravity. The first solution of Einstein's equations predicted not only black holes, but also their opposite, white holes. It also implied the existence of parallel universes and even possibly a way to travel between them. I ain't never heard of no white hole. Pause. Be very careful about people who give you a photograph of hell. The Bible does not give us a photograph of hell. It's not a burning place? Well, Jesus talks about it as fire. Yeah. I'm but it also know. talks about outer darkness. So how do you have fire and outer darkness at the same time? I think he's speaking metaphorically. Oh, Cliff, that's, you're just quibbling. Oh, you're just, you're just getting out of a difficult place. Wait a second. Jesus uses metaphor all the time. It's symbolic language to make a point, to speak truth. I'm the light of the world. No, Jesus is not claiming to be a 100 watt light bulb. I am the door. No, he's not claiming to be two pieces of plywood slapped together. He continuously uses metaphor to point to truth, but it's truth that is not quite as physical as I would like it to be. Mm. And I think mm. that's part of what hell will be. Hell is separation from God. I chose to live my life separate from him. And he says, fine, Cliff, you chose to live your life separate from me. You'll spend eternity separate from me. So just floating out in the universe, how they always say the universe is really big. Are they just floating in darkness? Or, or as you pointed out, they might be annihilated. Al you, is uh, annihilated mean gone? Gone. Destroyed. That's, that's merciful, though. Destroyed. That, that, like, even though, okay, for example, I'd never want to raise my hand and, and be, hey, man, that guy molested some kids. Yep. He needs to burn in hell for the rest of his life. Right. A lot of people are not wise enough to understand that he probably molested somebody because he was molested. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of demons on him. Yep. And I'm not trying to uh, uh, judge him. Right. But I know that if I was God, blasphemy of his sounds, I, I, you could point out any evil man in the world. I don't know if I could torture him endlessly right. forever right. and ever right. and ever. I, if I know my God's more merciful than me, that's a hard pill to swallow. Correct. But my question is, how is it, regardless if it's endless time away from him or gnashing of the teeth in a fire forever and always. Mm -hmm. How is a man uh, first submit to a God that knows that Sarah, who's ho helping homeless people right now, dedicating her life, giving half of her money away, is in the same spot that Hitler and Genghis Khan is going. To me, mm. it's hard for me to explain that to somebody. Right. And that's why I would not say same spot. Because I don't think hell is a spot. Mm. It's separation from God but it's not a physical location necessarily. See, the, the Bible's sufficiently vague about it that I really don't know. And that's, you know, we gotta be honest. Mm. It, I respect that. He said, I really don't know. A lot of people, bro, they not about to say that. They about to tell you what they think and say that's fact. I, I respect that he said, I really don't know. It doesn't specifically picture it graphically. And I think that guys like Dante have at times done a disservice in adding to the Bible. I take the Bible very seriously, so seriously that I don't want to add to it. You should right, right. Exactly. Because your word is human. Correct. So don't trust me. Trust Christ and read the Bible fairly. And I think if you read the Bible fairly, you'll realize it does not give us a physical description of hell. I respect that. I have a theory for the universe and I need you to listen up. So let's say this is the beginning of our life and this is the end of our life. When you're thinking about reincarnation, it's as if you go through your entire life and then at some part, you just start over and then you continue on to the next life, right? But we think in linear terms as human. What if it's not actually linear? What if this life is happening from start to finish and then your other life is happening from start to finish and your other life is happening from start to finish and they're all happening at the same damn time? And the core of all of those experiences make up the entirety of who you are, not only on a human level, but your fucking soul. But what if your soul is just a circle that is existing? Possibly a galaxy that is just existing. And all of these lives happening up at the same time make you who you are. So instead of going from this life and then back out here to this life and back out here, what if it all just is? And this is the isness of life. Isness. I think I figured.
figured it out. <laughs> but one thing that I've also thought about, the fact that like we have the Apple Cloud and it has every single person's videos, their photos, all of their experiences on their phone, right? Even if you do not go into the Apple Cloud and push play on a video, the entire 10 seconds of that video exists. That moment in time fucking exist. So you get to choose what video to watch. Even if you think about Spotify, every song is playing at the same time on Spotify, but it's not until you push play that a song starts playing for you. But if you don't push play, that song still exists. That song still makes sound. Every single second and point in that sound exist and is playing in that moment it's fucking insane i feel like i've cracked some type of code this book actually started all of my questions for this shit i swear to god the project 369 it goes over a lot of sacred geometry and like shit that like really wakes you up there's more than we know you know i feel insane explaining these concepts sometimes especially to like <laughs> just my normal friends so it's crazy to be here <laughs> on the internet explaining this shit i've never heard of that book interesting though if you were floating in space and your suit suddenly disappeared, most people think your body would just explode under the pressure. But that's not actually the case. You see, the first thing that would happen is you would immediately lose all of the air in your lungs. This would be quickly followed by your skin swelling as your bodily fluids start to vaporize. And in just a few seconds, you would lose consciousness due to lack of oxygen. If you went away from the sun, over the span of a few months, your body would freeze as it floated into the abyss. Hell no. Nah. I never want to experience that. Let's actually go to a new galaxy and see what kind of life we can find there. So let's zoom all the way out. So it's all of these easy. dots are going to be other galaxies. So let's fly over here a little ways and just click one and go to it. Here it is. We're going to fly in it and you'll see we'll start to see a bunch of stars. Look at the stars all around us. So it's saying this is the most Earth-like planet within 400 light years of our position. And here it is. What it is would be cool on? to go land on the planet and see what the rings look like from the surface. So we're going to go next to this river, I think. Go down here. Bro, what software is he using? Okay, so here's the view from the surface. You can actually see like the detail of this desert it looks like we're in. There's the rings. Here's the river in front of us. There's a star. Look at that. That's like, okay, watch this cinematic masterpiece right here. Put like some epic space music and just like watch. What the hell was he on? You know the Mars theory? That there's aliens on Mars? Nah, there's a theory <laughs> that Mars uh. was the original planet that humans were from. Okay. Then something happened that we all had to fly to another planet and live really? on. There used to be like civilization that lived on Mars. Now back this, uh -huh. on Mars, there's an element on the periodic table called xenon. Xenon yeah. on Earth is only found, this is crazy, is only found after a nuclear explosion. No, no, no. Oh, shit. That's not even the super mode button. I said, no. <laughs> what the hell? And yeah. it goes hand in hand now. What if on Mars, there was a nuclear warfare, destroyed the whole planet, but people were able to escape just in time, yeah. landed on Earth, and they had to restart from nothing. So we are the aliens. What? We're the aliens. What the hell? Yeah. It's real shit. Like this element's called Xenon. It's prominent after nuclear explosion. I do think we aliens though. The only answer to the question, are we truly alone in this universe, might be the dark forest theory itself. This theory explains why we have not detected any signs of alien life, and it suggests that many alien civilizations exist in our galaxy, but they are hiding from each other out of fear of being destroyed by an advanced civilization. If you are scuba diving above a coral reef and you know that there should be fish all around you, but you don't see any, it's most likely that they have learned that for some reason it's important not to be seen. But since you are a newcomer to this environment, chances are it's not you they are hiding from but something more sinister but imagine that you are in a dark forest for five days trying to survive mysteriously on the final day you encounter an alien species just like you neither of you knows the other's true intention and the one who pulls the trigger first wins but according to the kardashev scale we are a type zero civilization which means we are a noob when it comes to space wars and our weapons are inevitably useless so remember Damn. to enjoy every moment of your life because if aliens find us we are doomed if you find this video interesting comment down your thoughts damn. and follow for more damn 
This is the scariest place in the universe and it will send shivers down your spine. To find this place, you'll need to zoom out from Earth all the way to the biggest structure in the universe, the cosmic web. This web makes our universe almost look like a massive brain, as it contains giant tendrils made of gas, dust, and galaxies that kind of look like neurons. But in between these tendrils are huge expanses of mostly empty space, cosmic graveyards devoid of galaxies that we call voids. And 700 million light years away, there lies the most expansive void ever discovered, the Boötes Void. This void is huge, you could fit billions of Milky Ways inside of it, but throughout this entire void there exist just 60 galaxies. It is so dark and empty that if you are dropped at its deepest, darkest corner, it's likely that you would see absolutely nothing. This space stuff is wild. This is the single greatest photograph ever taken in human history. A photo taken in 1990 by Voyager 1 on its final leg of its incredible mission. From a distance of 7 billion kilometers, Voyager 1 for one last time turned its camera back towards our home planet and captured what has become one of the most iconic images of Earth. A tiny pale blue dot suspended in the vastness of space. On this dot, every human who has ever lived, every memories that we've ever created, every sadness that we have ever felt, every piece of art we've ever created and every step we've taken towards progress, it all exists in this small blue dot. This picture humbles and shows us how insignificant we are compared to everything else. Compare Jeez. the size of the Milky Way to our observable universe, it's just a grain of sand. Now compare yourself to the observable universe, you are a trillion times smaller. So the next time when you worry about something, just look back at this image and think, is it all really worth it? If you find this video interesting, comment down your thoughts and follow for more. That's real. Put things in perspective a little bit. This is how you know the Earth is flat. How the fuck you got the sun out there and you got the moon out there? At the same time. You At know what's crazy, bro? You know what's crazy? What's up? Doesn't the motherfucking <laughs> moon get its light from the fucking sun? The Earth is flat, motherfucker. But the moon gets its light from the sun so we can see the sun is all the way moon. over there. Bro, well, we can see the moon and right the then. sun at the same time. But that's what I'm trying to tell you, What if you're living in a dome? Ah. Uh, mm. Dome win. <laughs> Do you know what happens in just one second? In every second on Earth, 24,000 tons of ice melts from our surface. Damn. Four people are born and two people pass away. And in the 10 seconds you've been watching this, lightning has struck over 1,000 times, producing enough energy to charge your phone for 15,000 years. Wow. But it gets crazier. In this very next second, light just traveled across Earth seven times, and Earth itself drifted 18 miles through space. By this point in the video, over 40,000 stars have exploded, and over wow. a million more stars have been born. And Elon Musk, he made nearly the yearly average income in just the duration of this video. Wow. Wow. People say the sun is yellow. No, it's not. It's white. If the sun were yellow, just think this through. If the sun were yellow, then in broad daylight, snow would be yellow. But generally, it's not, all right? <laughs> when the sun sets, its light is heavily attenuated by dust in the atmosphere. These particles in the air scatter blue light out of the sun into the rest of the sky, turning the sky blue. And the more blue light it takes out, the more yellow red the sun looks. Right. And that's why right on the horizon, the sun is its deepest yellow red it will ever be. And people say, oh, there's our yellow star. No, it's, it's, the sun is white. Not like a beautiful sunset. What would happen if the Earth stopped rotating for a second? Oh, yeah, that would be disastrous. Disastrous, because right now, here in New York, you can calculate at our latitude, we are all moving with the Earth at 800 miles an hour, due east, because Earth is rotating. If you stopped Earth and you weren't seat belt buckled to the Earth, you would fall over and roll 800 miles an hour due east. Mm. It would kill everyone on Earth. People would be flying out of windows, and that would just be a bad day on Earth. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, if somehow we all slowed down, so anything not bolted to the Earth would, would fly due east, 800 miles an hour. That's what happens to you in a car if you hit a brick wall and you're not wearing a seatbelt. You keep going. 
Mm. That's why you get hurt in those kinds of accidents. It's but if somehow we all slowed down with the Earth, then, okay, it's fine. I mean, people think we'll, somehow we'll be weightless or we'll lose our atmosphere. No, it's just that you'll have really long days. What if you dug up the earth and then jump? Will it reach the other side of the planet? First you just need to dig a 13,000 kilometer tunnel. You can dig to the other side of the world and then be what? brave enough to jump. The first problem you have Ain't is no the way. temperature. Deepest hole in the world. Clark ultrasonic drilling. The internal temperature reached 180 degrees Celsius and that's only 12 kilometers deep. So you'll be turned to ashes by the heat. Resurrect and start again. You're wearing a heat resistance <laughs> suit. Resurrect. Keep jumping. The second problem encountered is stress. The air pressure at the Earth's surface is about 16 pressure, but moving at high speeds in a tunnel. Then you just need to drop down to a depth of 50 kilometers. The pressure would be more than 15,000 psi. That kind of intense pressure can crush you. Back to the Damn ground. Uh. Now you have a pressure resistant suit and insulate the tunnels. You jumped again. We all know that the Earth itself has been revolving again. So the tunnel and the Earth are not perpendicular in any meaningful way. It'll put you in the middle of a rapid descent. It crashed into the wall of the tunnel and shattered. In order to solve this problem, you need to dig a tunnel between the North Pole and the South Pole. This makes sense Duh. vertically. Solve all the problems above. You Duh. jumped again. As you descend to the center of the Earth, you'll see the gravitational pull of the Earth in all directions is pulling you in. These gravitational forces will keep you afloat in the center of the Earth. What? If you can break through the gravity problem, then you'll be hurtling toward the other side at 22 times the speed of sound. If this happens then, the gravitational pull that was on you before, it's all going to work in the opposite direction for you. The farther away from the center of the Earth, the greater the gravitational pull in the opposite direction. When you're breaking through to the other side, the gravitational pull in the opposite direction will pull you into the tunnel again. It'll make you wow. look like a ball. Back and forth between the two ends of the Earth. If you were a genius, took care of all the above, then you only need 40 minutes. You can jump from one side of the globe to the 40 other. 40 minutes? 40 minutes, bro. Stop it. Albert Einstein destroyed a planet. Yup, there used to be nine planets in our solar system and Mercury was not the closest to the sun. Or so we thought. And I'm not talking about Pluto. I'm talking about Vulcan. For the longest time, scientists and astronomers thought that there was a mysterious planet, Vulcan, lurking somewhere between Mercury and the sun. Why did they think this? Well, Mercury wobbles a little bit in its orbit, and in the mid-1850s, the only explanation we had was that there had to be some sort of planet between Mercury and the Sun that was exerting a gravitational force on Mercury and causing these orbital wobbles. And this was not at all a radical theory at the time. In fact, we discovered Neptune only after observing wobbles in Uranus's orbit, much like Mercury's. The math suggested that there had to be another planet beyond Uranus, and then we directly observed Neptune and proved that math correct. So logically, we also applied that to Mercury. But see, directly observing Vulcan like we did with Neptune was much harder. The math suggested that if Vulcan existed, it would exist very close to the sun, but observing something that close to the sun in that direct blinding light is very difficult, if not mm -hmm. impossible. But the real reason we could not directly observe Vulcan, even though some astronomers claimed that they had seen it, was really because it didn't exist. And we learned that only after Einstein developed his theory of relativity that radically changed our understanding of how gravity works. See, according to the theory of relativity, the sun is so massive that it actually warps space-time around it. So Mercury wobbles wow. not because there is a planet there exerting a gravitational force on it, but simply because it's lazy. It is simply trying to take the shortest path around this warped space-time. And that's the story of how... Wow, the sun warps time? If Earth isn't flat, then explain this. You gotta do some dosh. know the famous moon landings oh, have man. bloopers? Yeah, this is real footage bloopers. from astronauts struggling on the moon. Well, here are the three most interesting clips I found from the moon landings. With the moon having one-sixth of the Earth's gravity, 
astronauts have compared walking on the moon to skipping on a trampoline. Now, combine less gravity with 180 pound bulky spacesuits, and that's why it's so difficult to walk on the moon. This next one is pretty funny. Did you know astronauts had moon cars? And they'd sometimes take these rovers on joy rides. Well, on one of these rides, astronaut Gene Cernan accidentally broke part of the exterior. He repaired Damn. the $50 million rover with duct tape. We all know Neil Armstrong, the first person to ever walk on the moon, and fellow Purdue grad. <laughs> well, his footsteps will likely last millions of years because there's no wind or water to erode them away. Pretty cool. If that's real, some people don't believe it. And there's like a theory of like... It was about the monuments. The Lincoln looker, the Washington Tower, yeah, and yeah. like the Statue of Liberty and all that. And it's like that there's these creatures inside of them. And like they feed on people and stuff like that. And what? people get like kidnapped and brought to these things. And they're like power the underground systems of like what the top people got going on. Like it's a crazy what? ass thing. Even though it's based on like an alternate universe. It, it fucked me up. Basically trying to say like it's not happening here. There can be very well certain parts to it or components that are true. What? In this video, the government put a monster inside the Statue of Liberty. It's awful. The whole place reeked of flesh like a slaughterhouse. I remember looking out the window each night and seeing lines of people being led to the statue by officials. Wait a minute. After they would go into the pedestal, the, pedestal, the officials would leave and nothing else. Are they slaughtering people? The following what? morning would smell so much worse, though, like a slaughterhouse. First sighting of the Liberty Lurker. I beg your pardon? Ain't no way. I ain't gonna say it no way. I ain't gonna say that. If you live in the United States of America, more than likely you recognize this right here as the Washington Monument. And this slideshow that I got tagged in has been getting some traction and starts off with a photo of the special tree that's inside of the Washington Monument. There are then some photos that show what claim to be the building process, and what? finally, the modern day Washington Monument. Now this right here seems to me more like a creepypasta or made up story. They're claiming that this tree had special powers and was fully sentient and conscious, whereas the Washington Monument, the inside, really isn't as interesting as this. For those of you wondering what's actually inside of the Washington Monument, this diagram does a really good job of explaining it. You can pause it and read it if you'd like to. Essentially, it boils down to it's pretty much hollow. You're allowed to visit it, go up to the very top, check out the observation deck, and go back down. There's only a set amount of visitors that are able to go inside every single day, but I'm sure if you asked any of them that went inside if they saw an old tree, they would say no. So basically, that's just some BS. Dude, I totally forgot about the monument mythos. I don't know how, but it just slipped my mind. Like I made a video the other day recommending like unfiction and analog horror web series. And I said that Gemini Home Entertainment was better than Local of 58. And I stand by that, but the monument mythos is better than both of them put together. It tells the best and most coherent story in my opinion. It is by far the scariest one that I've seen. And I don't really like keep up with unfiction and analog horror and stuff like that very much anymore more, but I am so, so glad I watched this. Plus, it features the best president that we unfortunately never had. It also features the worst president we never had, but let's let's just focus on President Dean. Anyways, if this is your kind of thing, like analog horror, unfiction, all of that kind of stuff, highly, highly recommend the Monument Mythos. I cannot believe that I forgot to mention it the other day when I was recommending things like this. It is so good. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Keeping it a hundred. Did you ever notice that the Washington Monument is two different colors? I think you can definitely see it better here. I feel like a lot of people have noticed this and just never questioned it, or they just don't care. But there's actually a reason for this. So why is the Washington Monument two different colors? Just for funsies, these were some original proposals for the monument, and this is the closest proposal that resembles what it looks like today. The cornerstone of the Washington Monument was laid on July 4th, 1848, and construction began using marble from a quarry in Texas, Maryland. However, by 1854, donations to fund the 
monument dried up and the construction was halted. It stayed looking like this for about 25 years and people even wow. called it the stump. So after the Civil War, as the country was coming to its 100th birthday, there was renewed interest in finishing this project. Construction resumed in 1879, however, the original quarry in Texas, Maryland was no longer available. So the builders sourced marble from a different quarry near Baltimore, which had a slightly different color. And that's why it's two different colors. You can literally see where it was left off for almost 25 years. The Washington Monument, as we know it today, was dedicated on a freezing day in February 1885. And despite its original proposed design, I can't imagine the skyline of Washington, D.C. without this iconic landmark looking exactly as it does today. Interesting facts. The Statue of Liberty is hiding something scary. To many, the Statue of Liberty represents freedom. However, many don't know where this freedom comes from. If you look at the statue closely, the seven points on its crown signifies the seven deadly sins of the world. Oh. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. And the torch represents someone called the light bearer, which you might be more familiar with as Lucifer. If we put all the pieces what? together, you will realize that the Luciferian agenda has been propagated the whole time. And the quote-unquote freedom that the Statue of Liberty represents is actually freedom from God and religion. Whoa. It is said that the devil's ultimate weapon is deception. Maybe this entire time he has been hidden in plain sight, tricking us into darkness. Whoa. What do you think? Fam, have you heard that a massive statue has appeared in the Chesapeake Bay that should not be there? And when scientists went down to the bottom, they saw something impossible. No way. Yo, check this out. So a, a few days ago, a pilot from Norfolk had spotted a statue poking out of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh -huh. When scientists what? dove down to see the bottom, they saw that it was connected to like a massive temple. Yeah. Now bag this. The temple itself was constructed from material which does not exist on Earth. What? Almost as if someone had flown by, dropped the temple no in the way. ocean and disappeared you know uh -huh. no way y'all let me know somebody do some research on this and come back and comment on this is this real all right so uh when they went inside they saw something terrifying yeah there was a massive creature but nothing like ever seen before so bag this a beast with a dragon's head and a snake's body oh my god yeah that's uh -huh. what they stumbled upon and fam they were freaked out it started tearing through the scientists like a hot knife through butter yeah. no only way. a couple of them managed to bolt out of there calling for an emergency lift to get the heck away from that nightmare a few days later some folks flying over the area noticed the temple had pulled a houdini sitting almost two miles from where it was supposed to be nobody was taking those two survivors seriously not until they whipped out their gopro footage if you want to see it follow us hit share then Man, more no photos. way no way no way there is a field in Virginia that is home to 42 abandoned presidential statues. These statues are about 20 feet tall and around 20,000 pounds. Now, Whoa. internet legend claims that there is no explanation for this. That is not true. There 100% is. These heads used to be part of a tourist park in Williamsburg, Virginia from 2004 to 2010. Eventually, the park went bankrupt and the owner was tasked with taking them to a stone crusher to dispose of them. But he was a historian and just couldn't bring himself to do it. So he spent a ton of money to get them transported to his personal farm. Now, in order to actually move these things, he had to put a hole in the top of each statue to expose the metal brackets to lift them. And out of all the statues, only one fell during the entire process, leaving a huge hole in the back of the head. And ironically, that statue was Abraham Lincoln. Wow, that's crazy. The Mount Rushmore conspiracy theory suggests that there is a hidden agenda or secret meaning behind the iconic monument located in South Dakota. Proponents mm. of this theory claim that the sculptures of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt hold deeper symbolic significance, representing a hidden message or prophecy. Some theories propose that the sculptures align with constellations or possess hidden chambers within them. Others suggest so. that Mount Rushmore's true purpose is to serve as a secret entrance to an underground base or to conceal ancient artifacts or technologies. Could These be. theories often prompt speculation about the true intentions of the monument's creators and its significance in a broader historical and global context. While mainstream interpretations attribute Mount Rushmore to a tribute to American history and its presidents, the conspiracy theories surrounding it continue to captivate imaginations and spark discussions about hidden meanings and undisclosed histories. Did you also know that Listen, all that stuff can be true. All of it.
If you're like addicted to TikTok and you find yourself reaching for your phone throughout the day and you just mindlessly scroll, I have a hack for you that's gonna help you so much to cut down your screen time and you can literally do it right now in like one minute. While I was sick, I got into a really bad habit of going on my phone first thing in the morning. That's terrible for you because that's gonna pretty much guarantee that you're gonna wanna be going to your phone all day because the first dopamine hit that you get in the day is what you'll continue to look for throughout the day. What you're gonna do is you're gonna change your phone from color to black and white because that way it's just not going to hit the same. You're not going to get the same dopamine hit and you're you just going to not <laughs> want to mindlessly scroll because it's just not that rewarding for your brain. Because it's in black and white, it's just not giving your brain that reward and that satisfaction that you would usually get, which is what unconsciously keeps us coming back. So if you do put your phone in black and white, that'll assure that you'll go and scroll and it's just not going to hit. Like you're going to be like, this is boring. Let me go do something else. Change your phone to black and white so you can be productive and you can focus your energy on yourself and not on others on tiktok i like that focusing on yourself i like that the cell phone is a goddamn fucking prison more specifically social media and then i'm not even talking about all the wild shit you see on there all the crazy wild shit Whoa. forest fires and fucking adam 22 and only fans <laughs> and threesomes we are this is not what life is Mm. It's not what life is. The iPhone came out in 2007. We can't deal with this much information. He was going in, whoever he was. Turn it off. That's what I would say. It's, it's, it's hard for young people now because they're hooked. They're addicted. If you don't think you're addicted, and I'm talking about anyone from the highest to the lowest, if you don't think you're addicted, then see if you can turn it off for a week. Mm. Got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it get real quiet? It's a tool. Facts. So we should use it. God has blessed us with free will. Now it's free will magnified, free will on steroids. You're free to go in any direction you want. It will allow you, and it's not the enemy. It's just a ma it's it's just a reflection of our own free will. Oh, and, and we all want to be liked. But now we want to be liked by 16 million. Mm. And will now some of us do anything to be liked? We we used to do anything to be liked, but it was the by the person in front of you. <laughs> now it's to be liked by 16 million people that you don't know. He be dropping some gems when he get in his bag. This is an unfortunate story. It's kind of funny, though it's also kind of sad. There's a, a remote tribe in the Amazon jungle. They have been connected to the internet now. Uh, this is thanks to Elon Musk's Starlink, and uh, it's thanks directly to an activist who hooked up this tribe with Starlink. And uh, immediately the tribe got hooked on social media and, and uh, everything what? in the tribe fell apart. According to the Post, wow, this 2,000-member uh, tribe, the Marubo tribe, lives along the Itui River. Deep in the Amazon jungle, they were connected to the web last September when 20 antennas were donated to them by an American entrepreneur. And uh, now the elders are alarmed because uh, the youths and just the people broadly are hooked on social media platforms. And when wow. it arrived, according to Tsainamama, Tsainama Marubo, an elder there, when it arrived, everyone was happy. Now things have gotten worse. Young people have gotten lazy because of the internet. They're learning the ways of white people. What? This tribe elder is right. This is a problem. The tribe is learning the ways of white people, and now they're all hooked on and they're lazy and they're decadent. The tribe is learning the worst ways of white people. The white mm. people have done a lot of bad stuff, okay? <laughs> it's a fallen world. Everyone has virtues and vices. And uh, unfortunately here, what we're seeing at this tribe in the Amazon is that white people are bringing the absolute worst stuff about white culture, which is liberalism, uh, modern individualism, the internet uh, <laughs> for the purpose of what? Of and self-adulation through social media. It, that's the problem. Here's the key, I think, to this story. The Marubo, unlike other pagan tribes, the Marubo are a chaste tribe. They, they frown upon kissing in public even. Now, all these standards of decorum have been upended. Wow. The, the young Marubo men have been sharing the videos to each other. 
<laughs> they have demonstrated already more aggressive sexual behavior than the Whoa. Maruga had seen before. We're worried, says one, one tribal leader. Wow. We're worried young people are going to want to try it. All of these decadent, disgusting things that they've been seeing on screen. Oh, man. Another father, Kaipa Marubo, is worried about his kids playing first-person shooter video games, saying, I'm worried that they're suddenly going to want to mimic them. Ooh. And so this is a vindication of all the scolds in the 90s. You know, all the scolds that got made fun of and were called uh, hysterical in the 90s for warning that violent video games were going to encourage acts of violence and all the libertines said, no, that never happens, man. Mm. Come on, quit blaming violent video games for, vi for increasingly violent behavior. Stop blaming all the for all of the increasingly weird sex stuff that people are engaging in in the real physical world. The Marubo understand human nature a lot better than those white liberals. Because what the Marubo recognize is that human beings are mimetic. We imitate each other. Mm. That's how we, that's how we do cultivate our personalities. That's how we learn how to be human. You imitate your mommy and daddy, and then you imitate your family, your extended family, then your older brothers. Then you imitate your friends and family in your community. That's real. This is why it, there's a common expression that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. Because we're mimetic. This is the theory advanced mimetic. by Rene Girard, who I've mentioned on this show before, the French sociologist who, who has this thesis, uh, an obviously true thesis as far as I'm concerned, that, that uh, so much of our character, not only what we do and how we talk, but even our desires are products of imitating Ooh. the desires of others. Ooh. You want the Rolex watch, not because you know anything about watchmaking, but because people who you admire and respect and want to be like, like the Rolex watch. And so you, you mimic even their desires. That's true. Wow. The Marubo recognized this. So if you have a culture, not to sound like 90s church lady, but if, if you want a culture that's not violent and uh, crazed and full of lust and, you know, d decadent sex stuff, then you got to, you got to tamp down the, the violent video games. It's just, that's just a fact. It shouldn't even be that controversial. If the Marubo can get it, the white libs in America should get it too. Ooh, we. Oui. I decided to delete my Instagram because I just felt like I was so addicted to this kind of false version of my life that it was just taking over. I would be on set working, I'd come and sit in my chair and just scroll, 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 scroll. And it was, it was becoming a problem. I was just obsessed with it and I was obsessed to find out what people were saying and how people, what they thought about me. Mm. So I decided to make an announcement, which unfortunately we have to do, and say that I'm taking a break from social media. And I, and I try to position myself and say, like, I'm taking a break from social media because I feel like my mental health will benefit from it. And the thing that really upset me is the press ran with that and they tried to make out that I was having this mental breakdown. And what upset me was, if I was having a mental breakdown, that's not for you to report on. They, they, mm. they took the story in the wrong direction and they try, they painted again this negative light on mental health. Wow. Negative light on mental health. Hey. Signs you're addicted to social media. One, the first thing you do in the morning is you check your social media. You check Instagram. Y'all let me know in the comments, are y'all any of these points that she said, waking up in the morning and checking your social media first thing in the morning. Be honest. Be honest. TikTok, Snapchat, whatever social media platforms that you have, you feel like you have to check that first thing in the morning. Two, you get upset if your post doesn't get as many likes as it usually gets. You have to remember that social media is not real life, and it's okay if your post doesn't get as many likes as it usually does. Three, you get anxious if you cannot access your social media. I remember one time I got so anxious and nervous and so upset because there was a glitch with my Instagram, and I thought someone had hacked into my Instagram account and then I had to remind myself like there's no point in worrying over something that I have no control over that's real women we are so addicted to attention that if we don't get the validation and attention from men a lot of times we'll resort to this stuff and that's why the social media age has really messed us up so much because we're so used to getting a certain level of attention that it's unprecedented in all of history women have never gotten this much attention even the most beautiful women that a lot of times when it starts to go away we just kind of start to go crazy we start to go nuts and do bigger and bigger and more and more shit for attention Y'all agree with that?
To have your kids in front of an iPad at a restaurant or an iPhone, to have your kids on an iPad or an iPhone in the backseat of a car while you're driving, just to be able to keep them calm, keep them entertained, keep them from basically being loud and obnoxious kids, you're really doing two very bad things. One, <clears throat> you're killing brain cells on that kid. Number two, like all that blue light flashing in their face and the lack of interaction. That blue light. Get off social media. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be my honest advice, but, uh, but that's a nearly impossible thing to say to a generation, uh, younger than me and my generation as well. So my advice is everything you're looking at is 90% fake. Yeah. And you have no idea what's behind a photo mm -hmm. and you have no idea what's actually going on. All you have is who you are. Take breaks and just enjoy what's actually around you because believe it or not everything in this little tiny device does not define you right. does not make you a human it's simply a device you can put it down and be a part of the world again try to do that she seemed like she was going through some stuff was she talking right I hate to break it to you, but if you're watching this video, you are most likely addicted to social media. You have to understand that these algorithms are not people on the other side of the screen watching your every move. Algorithm is artificial intelligence built to get to know you as well as possible. The whole point is to get you on this app and keep you there as long as possible. But yeah, they'll use what you like, save and share to show you content that you like, but don't be fooled because it's not a fair fight. An algorithm that you truly don't understand is playing on your weaknesses. I'm not telling you this to encourage you to delete social media, but it's very important that social media users know the fight we're up against. Right. And the crazy part about it is this video may be shadow banned or if enough people engage with it, it might really blow up. <laughs> but that's not up to me. It's up to the algorithm. Right. Right. Because of TikTok and Instagram and all of these social media apps, we desire instant this is part two of worldly habits that we translate into our faith life that can end up no bueno. Let's go. Yeah, so just by the nature of TikTok and television and all of that stuff, you're just so used to being entertained 24 seven. So it makes it difficult for us to endure things that are a little bit more challenging, like prayer or going to church, things that require us to just sit patiently and receive and not be entertained Ooh, for however long we're that's sitting good. here for. So let's that's take good. an effort to be actively engaged in something that's worth our while. I love that the word endure means to suffer patiently. It's like something you can think about in those moments. Like you're gonna endure the silence. You're gonna endure the time. You're gonna suffer patiently for our Lord. We just desire instant gratification. And so moments when the Lord doesn't give us an answer right away, it just becomes even more. Even watch a 10 minute YouTube video in a topic that you are interested in without feeling the need to skip to the next video or to start browsing the comments while the video is still playing. You literally cannot even enjoy the things that you are supposed to enjoy anymore. Now, if you recognize yourself in these examples, this is probably because the reward circuit in your brain, the so-called dopamine system has gone numb due to overstimulation. And guess what? Social media, one of the most overstimulating things that you can possibly do. These apps are literally designed to abuse your dopamine system so you mm. stay addicted. Them. The more that you use social media, the more that you lose your ability to enjoy your life. If you wow. want to learn how to actually do this stuff less, check out my YouTube channel. I just want to show you something. This is the psychological power of the device. What if I was sitting here talking to you, holding my phone? It's not buzzing. It's not beeping. No one's calling me. I'm just holding it. Do you feel like you are the most important thing to me right now. No, you don't. That's the association. So when we show up for a meeting or we sit down for dinner with our families and we put mm. the phone on the table, it sends a psychological message to everyone sitting there that you are not the most important thing to me right now. Ooh. And putting the phone upside down is not more polite. Put it in airplane mode to take away the temptation that something's coming in and put it in a bag or on a shelf, out of sight. And this is how we should be interacting with people. Give 
This is the basics of just human communication. And you got to be on stage telling people, hey, you need to put your phone away. This is how we need to communicate. This is how humans do it. This is wild. Giving them our full attention because the idea is not that we hear the words they say, but that they feel heard. And this is one of the tricks. Ooh. If you wake up in the morning and you check your phone before you say good morning to the person sitting next to you, you probably have a problem. If you have to take your phone from room to room, no matter where you go, you probably have a problem. And just like any recreational drug, the more you practice leaving it away, for example, if you go out for dinner, you don't need four telephones. Leave one at home, leave one in the car. You have one with your spouse, it's fine. If you have a client meeting, leave it in the car, leave it in the bag, never take it out. And you find it easier not to be sucked in by the the fear mongering as well. So like any addiction, it just takes a little work. That's real, but it takes work. I was addicted to social media and looking at how many likes and wake up in the morning and I'm looking at social media. No, that mm. is not where God wanted me to be. And, mm. and in my opinion, it's not healthy. Mm. You know, it was a time when I was spending time with God, but not like I should. I was totally just looking, checking to see who's. And it's just like, when you stop looking at the highlights of everybody else's life, you see the beauty in your own. Yeah. And I've really been on a journey of um, unlearning that bad habit. And it yeah. took a while to like break it. And I've broken it and I like it here. I had no time for the gym. I had all these things I wanted to do. And I'm like, I don't have time. But the amount of time I was spending scrolling, yeah. mm -mm, it was not it was not good for men, my mental yeah. health. And actually for me in my industry, you're constantly seeing your peers yeah. killing it there. For me, mm. like the person's presenting that, that person's singing at that show. Mm. And I just don't think God's created us to consume right. everybody's lives. Right. Like, and if I'm right. looking at everybody else's life, how am I living my own really yeah. to the fullest? That's a fact. This social media stuff. I love social media, but social media is hurting some of you. It's a tool. The question is, are you using the tool or is the tool using you? Please believe Instagram is a lie because we're not broadcasting our failures and we're not posting our challenges and we're not uploading all of our weaknesses. No, we're only showing you the good stuff. And just because we're only showing you the good stuff doesn't mean there's not some bad stuff that right. we're walking through. Right. And the only way you're going to walk into amazing things is when you get your eyes off of the grass on the other side and you get focused where you are. Oh, he got fire. He fired up. I like that. Social media is the reason why relationships, a lot of relationships fail, in my opinion, it has to be because you are you're, what you're doing right in a sense is comparing yourself to people who are only putting out the good. You're really like yeah. comparing yourself to people that are not putting the negative stuff out there. I'm not saying that you need to be this, 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 this gloomy person on social media. I'm just saying to be yourself and be vulnerable and transparent. Listen, the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. I don't care if it's a cliche. Mm. Cliches are cliches because they're true. You know what I mean? And I feel like social media has really, really fucked up this generation to the point where like, I'll tell you this, bro. The next relationship that I get in, I will not be following her on social media. It's so crazy. I will not be following her on social media, bro. Any of them. TikTok, Instagram, if you still use Meta, Facebook, X or Twitter or whatever fuck we'll call it. I'm not following you on social media, okay? And don't follow me because you know what? Sometimes I play around on there too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes I play around on there too, but it doesn't make me, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, we will, I'm telling you, bro, I don't know who that's going to be whenever the fuck that happens. And I'm sure maybe you're not going to understand it, but you know what? I feel like that's really the way to go. What y'all think about that in the comments? One thing that does not help at all is social media. It makes girls compare themselves, it makes guys compare themselves of what kind of girls they're getting with. It's very, very toxic, and that's why back in like the 70s, 80s, 90s was when all of like the real love and everything was I around. Say, I wouldn't say that. I'd say before that. Nowadays, it's a competition. Yeah. It's an absolute competition, and you'll never win. Yeah. That's the thing, because there's always going to be somebody a step above you yeah. in social media. You're constantly comparing yourself, but back then, maybe girls were comparing themselves to magazines. Yeah. Guys were comparing themselves, we compare ourselves all the time to social media presence, your body. I like showing my life on, on the internet, but it's very, very toxic for the wrong people. Yeah. Because it, it, yeah. it lowers your self-esteem so, so much. Man. Yes, it can.
What's social media doing to our brain? There's a, a book I love called Thrilled to Death. Uh, it's continually pressing on your nucleus accumbens that produces dopamine. Continually pressing on the pleasure centers in your brain. But the problem with that is the more you press on them, they begin to become numb. And Ooh. you need more and more excitement, more and more stimulation in order to feel anything at all. Whoa. A recent study shows that people in relationships who post on social media regularly are actually less satisfied with their relationship. Now, why do you think this is? I think it's because they're looking at other people's relationships and comparing. Okay, the study showed a couple different factors, but also people are trying to get that perfect photo. They're not just posting whatever photo happened. They're posing, they're creating an artificial environment to take a snapshot versus just something within the moment because it needs to look perfect because Jenny and Mark's, their thing looked perfect, but that's not reality. That's a fact, man. That is a fact. Social media is ass. It's trash, man. It's what? It's ass. But you, I feel like it's also good for you. Social media? Instagram is social media. Reddit is social media. Like, Dude, the internet is the worst. I mean, like, I, the internet created, like, made me at this place. So it's like, I'm thankful for that. But it's like, dude, that place is poison. Yeah. Mm. Poison. Nobody does anything real anymore, man. And I'm even guilty of it. Like. That was real. The impact of social media is undeniably harmful to our children. Yeah, you said it's, it's, it's putting our, our ability to connect and influence children's lives in grave jeopardy. So this world of virtual reality and social media has divested us of what it means to be human. Mm. It is antisocial, disconnected, yeah. fake, superficial, yeah. artificial, materialistic, yeah. comparative, competitive, yeah. Yeah. separatist. Yeah. In every way, it is eroding what it means to be a human soul. Oh, hey, hearing this stuff, man, what do you think the world is going to be at 20, 30 years from now? And we talking about this social media stuff now and where it's going to be in the future. Hearing her talk about this, she said it's eating away at the human soul. It is teaching our children to be entitled, mm. indulgent, instantly gratified, all Ooh. the things that we should be walking away from. We should be slowing our pace. We should be stilling our spirit. We should be soaking in nature. We should be connecting on a human personal level. We should not be in goal orientation the way we are. Oh, flick of a button and my food shows up. We should be in process. We're mm. missing the process of our creativity, of our joy, of our hardship. What happened to pain? We're trying to do away with pain in our thirst for happiness. And what we're doing is we're creating greater fragility because we she don't have the resilience in. to tolerate pain because we're wiping away pain. Yeah, nobody wants anybody to have a moment of, of uncomfortability. And that Ooh. is why our children are crumbling. Our Ooh. children feel the pressure of this artificial world like no one else. She was going in. So once you give your child a smartphone, the technology is so much fun, it's so addictive, it, because you get the rapid feedback and the great colors. So once you give your child their own personal iPhone or iPad or tablet, um, it will move to the center of their lives and it will stay there for the rest of their lives. So parents have to be thoughtful. Is the age six? At what age do I want my child to withdraw from the real world and spend, now teenagers are spending five hours a day just on social media, uh, about nine hours a day on their phones, and wow. half of them say they're online almost constantly. So what age do you want to start that? Because once you start it, you get all the is conflicts that you... Is there amount of time? Are, or is this like well, no the, screen time? The way to think, of, the way to think about this um, is what kids really, really need is play and social interaction in the real world. Face-to-face, -face, right, right, wrestling, right. putting their arms around their friends. All that stuff plummets after 2012 because kids are spending all day, even at school, they're doing this at school. They're not playing with their friends as much. So they need play in the real world. In terms of a safe amount of time, I wouldn't think that way. I would think movie uh, stories are good. Humans live in stories. If you want to watch a movie with your kid, that's fine. If you want your kid occasionally to watch an episode of a cartoon, that's fine. But it's the interaction for hours a day. That's what seems to really be so harmful. Mm. Makes sense. I say it all the time, bro. Social media messed everything up. It oh, messed yeah. everything up because now all these women are feeling, oh, I got I got Tom, Dick, and Harry in my DMs. If you want to act up, well then it's all good. I got options. Yeah. You know? And in reality, it's like you're you're not you're not seeing the bigger picture here. It's like 
yeah, you got Tom, Dick, and Harry up in your, your DMs, right? But your man that, that been giving you time invested, that loves you, that, that put time and years and whatever, you know, all into the relationship, this man genuinely loves you. He loves you sincerely. These are the men out here you just don't understand. They really just trying to smash. Yeah. Let's be real. They trying to smash. Cause, and we know that, bro, because we're, we're part of those conversations, you know? They go, oh, well, I don't agree this and that. You don't need to agree. You're, you're not a man. Yeah. But we're the men, though. Like, we, we stay in, you know, having our conversations. We know what, what they're talking about. Just like females got their conversations that we don't know nothing about. But to sit here and, like, literally feel like you got options over a man who loves you genuinely, come on, man. This is why you struggle to stop scrolling on this app because it's more than just a social media addiction. Hi, I'm Andy, a mindset coach who helps you stop self-sabotaging so you can do more of the things you actually wanna be doing. Social media apps are addictive. However, the real reason that you can't put the app down is because the information you're consuming from the apps you're on actually gives you a boost of dopamine because it makes you feel smart every time that you learn something new, which creates a new form of addiction called an information addiction. This is when we use information to make us feel safe where we're at. And by doing this, it prevents us from being able to take action or live out our real lives with that information that's being given to us. Information is great, but when you're using it to feel safe and comfortable where you're at, that's when it starts to harm you. So if you're ready to move past this and actually start to do stuff with your life, you're going to want to address the discomfort that comes up when you get off the app. It's in this space that you can identify what fears lie below the surface that are preventing you from moving forward. I like that. Get out and do something. Why do we doom scroll and binge TV and is it really that bad? Here's a hint, it's probably the root cause of a lot of our problems. So here's what's happening. One of the main reasons we doom scroll is to avoid uncomfortable emotions. And these emotions are neither good or bad, but rather important signals for your life. Feeling lonely is a signal to connect or feeling stressed about work could be a signal to find a new job. And the reason I think it's having such a negative impact on our lives is because when we avoid these emotions, we're numbing these important signals for change in action. If you were an early human thousands of years ago and you felt lonely, there was no distraction from that emotion. Mm. It was a powerful signal to connect and to find your tribe because your survival depended on it. But now right. binging Netflix isn't a life or death situation. But I think something arguably more important is at stake, which is having a meaningful and fulfilling life. Right. So the next time you find yourself reaching to your phone to avoid those uncomfortable feelings, ask yourself, what signal is this emotion trying to tell me? And start to listen because your happiness depends on it. I like that. I like that. That's a signal. Well, a lot of people blame social media on the rise of, su of the suicide rate. A lot of people mm -hmm. blame the rise of mental health issues and depression issues on social media. And one thing I will point out about that is, yes, statistically, and yes, we got numbers that say the more people that use social media, the higher the depression is. I think that's correlation. Higher rates of cheating, too. Uh, really? Yeah. That's the thing that increased too with you social media. Really. Yes, especially Facebook. You unhappy motherfuckers. Uh right. so sorry. You said really uh there, Wait, I don't say Facebook? I'm pretty sure I could find the data on this no, if I looked it up. Don't, but don't. yeah, uh Well, here's the thing is did the cheating increase or is it just that Or is it more visible? Social media, for all the good that it does, makes it very hard to be self reflective. Mm. Interesting. I, I thought for sure you were gonna say it just leads us to compare ourselves. Why does it make it hard to be self-reflective? Well, it does. Well, comparing yourself is not self-reflective. Right. When you compare yourself, your standard is always what other people are doing. Right. Right. They're on these great vacations. He's got a great job. Tom has this amazing house where I'm living in this hovel in Los Feliz. Right. That's not looking at myself. That's always having the other person as the standard. It makes us so out in the world, in other people, what other people are saying, what other people are doing, it makes us continually think in the social sense and not able to turn inside and look Ooh. at how who we are, what makes us different. We're so attuned to what's cool, to what other people Ooh. are doing out there, what other people are saying, that we lose a kind of an intuitive grasp of who Ooh. we are, right? So the psychologist Abraham Maslow talked of impulse voices. He said that a child of one years old has this impulse voice that says, I like this fruit. I don't like this fruit. I'm going to throw it away. Right. And, the, and then other things, these, these voices inside that make them that individual. This is what they like and what they hate. 
right? And these are very, very important as you develop later in life. You know, this is what you love. These are the subjects that interest you. These are subjects you're not interested in. Mm -hmm. These are the people you like. These are the people you don't like. It's who you are in the deepest sense of it. It's your what I call your primal inclinations. It's you at its core. And if you're so attuned to what other people are saying oh my and goodness. doing and telling you and thinking, oh my that goodness. voice gets drowned out by a million other voices. And you're wow. not able to hear yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to take a step back and actually look at yourself and analyze yourself. Ooh. So I think that in some ways this, this dilemma that we're talking about is getting more and more difficult because to be able to do what you're talking about, you have to be willing to be alone. Right. You have to be willing to close the door in your room, write down and say, this is what's going on. Come on. This is what happened. This is what I did. This right. is what they did. Right. You can't be out there in the world and do this. It's impossible to do that process because mm -hmm. you're going to be sucked into the social dynamic and you won't be able to think about yourself. Ooh. So I think it's made things a little bit harder for people. Oh, that was on fire. All right, that was another TikTok conspiracy video, man. Hey, I, I was really tapped into the social media stuff. I was really tapped into that, just how it affects our brains, how it affects our perception of life, your life, my life, their life, this life. Like, that stuff is fascinating to me. Uh, and the, to the kids, how it's affecting the kids, the, the relationships. This is going to be very interesting to monitor, I'm sure, throughout history, you know what I'm saying, uh, with the social media age and all that stuff and just seeing years from now, the effects of video games, social media, all that type of stuff and seeing how it has affected society and the, just the makeup of families and uh, social norms, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. But look, man, if you into this stuff, I got a TikTok playlist you can check out, man. Uh, blow your mind if you made it this far you a real one for real till next time self-love and positivity our squad i got you and you know it Whew.